Hey guys, this is StormGavari88 again. Now today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite PC games of all time, Sid Meier's Civilization 4. Now, you have Civ 5 and Civ 6 that have come out recently, but Civ 4 truly does stand the test of time. The original vanilla version came out in 2006, and the Beyond the Sword expansion pack that I'm using came out in 2007, so going 10 years strong. Now what's so great about this game is that it has nearly unlimited replay value. Not only does a single game last hours if not days, but the huge number of options just to set up a game ensures that no two games are ever the same. In addition, the game designers have made it extremely easy to modify the game files, and therefore I've added the Ryukyu Kingdom as a playable civilization along with a few other tweaks. So I'll give you a quick run through of what I do to modify the game files. So after you install the game, you go to the program files folder, open, go down through the game folders until you find the assets folder. That's where all the editable stuff is, especially the XML folder. So I'm going to give an example of editing units. All of the XML files use standard XML markup. So here we have one unit, the lion, but say we wanted to edit a different unit or for example a tank. Go down, find the tank unit, and from here we have all the code for the tank unit. I could either change this to what I want it to be or I could take this base code and use it to create an entirely new unit. So for example I could decide whether I want it to be able to pillage or not. I can decide whether it's actually a, a military unit or I could change if it moves through mountains or not and etc and etc. So with this flexibility I can create whatever I want including the Ryukyu Kingdom. Now, while I'm about to showcase my Ryukyu Kingdom mod, I've made a few other tweaks to the game, like turning off global warming and adding a couple technologies and religions. So let's get started. So I'm going to use the in-game Civilopedia to show you everything. So, first of all, here we have the Ryukyu Kingdom. Now, I apologize for the very bare Civilopedia entry, but this page shows basically everything about it. So, here we have the leaders, Shohashi, Ogiyaka, and Shoshin. Then we have the unique building, the Kasuku, and the unique unit, the Hiki ship. So, here we have King Shohashi, the Great Unifier. I've given him the aggressive and organized traits based on his historical background. Now, from my experience with him as an AI, he likes to play wide and aggressive, not surprisingly. I've also gone ahead and given him his favorite civic of hereditary rule. Next up, we have Queen Ogiyaka, the mother of King Shoshin. I've given her the spiritual and protective traits, given Ryukyu's belief in the spiritual power of women, and organized religion as her favorite civic. And last but not least, we have the great King Shoshin, who I've given the financial and expansive traits. I've also given him his favorite civic of bureaucracy. Alright, next we'll have a look at Ryukyu's unique unit, the Hiki ship. Like I said before, Ryukyu is an early powerhouse, and so while the Hiki ship replaces the Caraval, the Hiki ship is unlocked with Discovery of Compass. The Hiki ship is a lot like the Portuguese Carrick in that it can carry any two land units, but it is also stronger and faster than both the Carrick and the Caraval which it replaces. With this unit, Ryukyu will rule the seas early, 
and with leaders like Shohashi, they'll have cities all over the planet long before any other civilization even researches astronomy. Next we look at the Ryukyu and Unique Building, the Kasuku. Now I will admit now, this is very overpowered. It replaces the castle, but is unlocked at construction instead of engineering. In addition, it comes with a number of bonuses, such as increased espionage, an extra trade route, at five additional experience points for units built in that city, and most importantly, every Gasuku built starts a golden age. This is very important because you can build as long as you can keep building cities, you can keep starting new golden ages theoretically. It also becomes obsolete at industrialism, which is much later than the castle becomes obsolete. This does actually reflect history, because whenever a new Gasuku was built, it spawned a mini golden age in that region, and when most of the castles were used up until World War II. If you've ever played Call of Duty World at War, it's very memorable when you had to storm Shuri Castle and blow it up. So that's my Ryukyu Kingdom mod in a nutshell. So, again, early powerhouse is the focus. I've also chosen two of its most influential leaders and an extra interesting one. Ogiyaka is very obscure, but her background and her influence seems more profound than history notes it as. And in line with adding her, I added the Ryukyuan religion, and when I was trying to find a technology that would found Ryukyuanism, I couldn't find one, so I decided to make a new one, and I came up with Onarigami, which is the Ryukyuan word, which means woman spirit. But in addition to that, I also made Ceremonial Burial, which is a new one that I tried to tie in, and for priesthood, I made as a prerequisite for founding Shintoism. For the actual Ryukyunist religion, I borrowed a lot from the History Rewritten mod, uh, especially the symbols, the buttons, and some of the buildings, but I've mixed and matched a lot of stuff together. Modding can be really messy sometimes. So for example, uh, I still haven't gotten out this kink where if I found one of these two religions, uh, their symbol shows up as a corporation. But I'll get there eventually. And here we have the Ryukyuan missionary, the Nuru Priestess. While I've gotten this model chosen because I wanted an Asian female, but when I use the spread religion action, it doesn't have the glow effects. Uh, but the Shinto priest does work, so it is a process, and it takes a lot of work. But hopefully, you enjoy this what I've got so far. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm going to load up just a regular game. I'm going to choose Archipelago because it's where Ryukyu is going to do strongest. I'm going to make it a small map, tropical, to fit Ryukyu's type. And I'm not really sure what sea level to do, because each has its own benefits. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for the middle. Yeah. And standard archipelago works. Of course, Ryukyu. And... Oh, 
Let's see. I'm gonna go with Ogiaka for this one. Change name to Ogiaka. And. Yeah. I'm gonna play at the easiest level, just because. And normal game speed. Alright. And so, sun rises on the early Ryukyu Kingdom. Alright, so I'm going to only play this first turn and then I'll cut the video, but let's see. I'll go ahead and found my first city. This looks like a good spot. Naturally, the capital is at Shuri. I like to pump out culture to start with, and we'll go ahead and pop that goodie hut. And now I know I'm not going to go that way, so. Now for technology. There's a couple ways I could go with this, but since I'm playing as Ogiaka, I might want to go with a religion path. Yeah, and see, the tech tree's messed up because of the Anarigami tech. But I'm going to go ahead and go with Buddhism. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. I'll put up a part two later though. Well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm Sturm 88 and as always, see you next time.